is the God-ordained means by which they are to replicate this. What God tell them, you know, multiply, reproduce, multiply. Tells that to Adam after the flood. He tells Noah the same thing. Take your dominion over the earth. Okay, so the third heading here, this unique symbiosis, okay, is the central element of the first sphere of authority in God's universe, which is the family. Okay, government doesn't come along first. Okay, church, religion, that doesn't come along for the first sphere of authority that God produces in the earth is a man, his wife, and their offspring. Uh, Genesis 22, 2, we have the first mention of the word love in the Bible. And it's between Abraham and Isaac. Okay? It is a reference to how a father feels about his son, thine only son, who now lovest. Okay. Now, in order for Abraham to have this son, okay, it necessitated him having his wife Sarah. Okay. The God ordained nucleus of any family is okay, a God-ordained family is a man, his wife, and their offspring. There might be other people living within the home. Living with the okay, but a God-ordained family is a man, a wife, and their children, their offspring. Yeah. Now, let's throw a little illustration up here. Alright, we've got a man have a woman. Okay, and when they come together, they become the man's flesh and bone. Okay? She becomes him. Okay? Intricate, inseparable part of him. So, any offspring that they have, okay, they are the man's flesh and bone until such a time as a daughter, as a woman, is given to a man, then she becomes his flesh. And both. That is why a wife takes the husband's name. Because she is now part of him. And that's why children's offspring, okay, and have the father's name until, you know, in the case of the female gets married. Okay, has the father's name. Okay, God traces lineage, genealogy through the man. You know, for example, you've got other you know groups. You know, the uh, some of the Native American tribes, Mohawk tribe from which I come from, they're a matriarchal society and they trace lineage through the woman. Well, that ain't right. That's not biblical. That's not how it works. Okay. Okay, the natural order, man and a woman, to produce offspring. Okay, you can't produce a God ordained family any other way. Okay, with the exception of adoption. Okay, but again, it's a man and a woman adopting. Okay. A man and a man adopting children, a woman and a woman adopting children is not a God-ordained family. You know, and
man, unless it's a man and a woman, they cannot produce offspring according to God's order. Okay? Woman is as important to the whole thing as is man, because man is not complete and able to be the being that God has intended for him to be without a woman. That's why God says it's not good that man should be alone. Go with me to Jeremiah 31, 22. Prophet Jeremiah, weeping prophet. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. Right. Well, it doesn't sound right. I must have a wrong reference here. Yep, I do. Oh, uh, no, I'm reading. I'm trying to read above and below. Yeah, how long wilt thou go about, O thou, thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A man, a woman shall compass, um, go around a man. It's a reference to the virgin birth. The reference to the virgin birth. Uh, Genesis 3.15, after the fall, God saying to Eve, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, the woman doesn't have the seed, the man does. It's a reference to the virgin birth. The virgin birth, this is this whole process here that we're talking about here, about man, woman, uh, for reproduction, is what makes this virgin birth so significant and, and important here. Okay? Mary's a virgin when the Holy Spirit of God overshadows her, as it says, and God's seed is planted inside of her. Okay? There's no physical union between a man okay, and the Virgin Mary. And after Jesus Christ is born, guess what? Mary is still a virgin until she gives birth to her first son between her and Joseph. Okay? All God did was borrow her womb. Woman was an integral part of the whole process. He had to have a man with a womb. Blessed art thou above women. Among women, you know. That's all God. God borrowed Mary's womb. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, okay, is the Father's only begotten Son, His flesh and bone. Okay, just the same way my children are my flesh and bone. Jesus doesn't have any human relationship okay, genetically <laughs> to Mary. God just borrowed her womb. That's all that happened there. Okay, the seed, the woman's seed was one that God provided. Woman doesn't have seed. God's eternal plan to populate his ever-expanding universe, as we talked about many times, with a race of sinless beings who love him because they choose to, okay, that plan necessitated having a woman. Okay? And it's that way because that's how God chose it to be, and that is God's design and God's purpose. That's where we're going to start with all of this, okay? Eve, every bit as important as Adam. Because you could not have come to the point where we are today after having had the only begotten Son of God come to this earth as a sinless man and go through the process of his life that fulfill his work here, his death, burial, and resurrection, his ascension into heaven, seated at the right hand of God. We couldn't have the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, could not have any of that with just Adam. 
And Christ cannot be Christ without the help that's meet for him. His bride, which is the body of Christ. Every single individual believer comprises that body. Now, Lord willing, we'll continue uh, preaching on this subject. Again, I don't know how many weeks God will have me go on with this, but some of the things we're going to look at. We are going to look at women of the Bible as examples, both good examples and bad examples. You've got, just the same way as you've got examples of good men, you've got examples of bad. So you have examples of good women and of bad women in the Bible. We're going to look at scriptures in the Bible that are specific to women. I mean, a lot of the scriptures apply, you know, to anybody, male or female. There are some scriptures that apply strictly to men. But likewise, there are scriptures in the Bible that apply specifically to women. And so we're going to look at those things. And then we want to look at the specific guidelines and goals for the Christian woman uh, at every stage of their life, both physically and spiritually. So those will be some of the headings that God has given me to look into in these preaching, teaching lessons on the woman. Father, thank you, Lord. For your word. Thank you, Father, for the depth of the wisdom of the knowledge, Lord, of what is contained in your word. Lord, there isn't anything that we need to know that is not contained in your word. Lord, and that's why we need to give it that much greater attention and respect. To every aspect of our lives. Bless us now, Lord, as we go our separate ways. Keep us safe as we travel upon the roads. <coughs> I pray you'll bring us safely together again for the midweek service. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.